Microspherophakia is an uncommon bilateral development anomaly of crystalline lens, characterized by abnormally lax and broken zonules, resulting in a small spherical globular lens. In severe cases, it may be seen in the anterior chamber or the pupillary plane. As the lens in microspherophakia is small, spherical, owing to generalized zonulopathy, it remains freely mobile. Major surgical indications in case of microspherophakia are recurrent attacks of phakic pupillary block glaucoma, severely subluxated or dislocated lens, and corneal lenticular touch. There are various techniques that have been described in the literature for surgical correction. Intralenticular lens aspiration with bimanual irrigation aspiration can be done in such cases wherein two small rexes are created in anterior capsule. Further, a similar surgical approach with slight modification has been described wherein the vitrectomy probe was used along with irrigation cannula instead of the bimanual IA. In this conventional approach used by most surgeons, either a capsular rexus is created or an MVR blade is used to create an anterior capsular opening. The main problem associated with both the techniques is the absence of any counter-traction force and excessive mobility of the lens during manipulation. Most of the surgeons face a major challenge during this step and may land up with a posteriorly dislocated lens or an inappropriately large capsular tear which may result in migration of cortical matter in vitreous. We describe a new technique for the effective and controlled endocapsular lens aspiration in cases of microspherophakia, the kissing MVR technique. Two clear corneal stab incisions are placed at 180 degrees apart at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. In such cases, despite several attempts, it may be difficult to create capsular bag openings by using a single MVR blade. Further, the lens is pushed posteriorly with the movements of MVR increasing risk of posterior displacement. Peripheral iridectomy is created in supranasal quadrant. Viscoelastic is then injected near side ports to create space for maneuvering instruments. At this stage, the surgeon decides to use another MVR blade from the opposite side to provide counter-traction to the initial MVR blade. Two 23G MVR blades are held facing each other and simultaneously introduced through corneal stab incisions and engaged at the equator of the lens or just posterior to it, forming a dumbbell sign. MVR blades are then moved towards each other until the surgeon senses a giveaway feeling. Once the MVR tips touch each other, blades are then withdrawn back. A good hydrodelineation is carried out with the help of 25G BSS cannula without disturbing the peripheral cortex. 25G bimanual IA probes are then introduced in the capsular bag through equatorial openings in retroillumination mode. The central core of the lens is aspirated first, followed by removal of the peripheral cortex. Intracameral pilocarpine is then injected and the empty capsular bag is removed with a vitrectomy cutter. Finally, triamcinolone assisted limited anterior vitrectomy is performed and the anterior chamber is formed with BSS. The major difference in conventional approaches and kissing MVR technique is that our technique involves the simultaneous introduction of two 23G MVR blades into the capsular bag approximately 180 degrees apart at the equator or just posterior to the equator. This simple maneuver helps as one MVR gives stabilization and counter-traction for the opposite MVR while puncturing into the bag. In our technique, simultaneous horizontal and forward force is applied on the lens to make entries into the capsular bag while in conventional approach, vertically downward force is applied to create openings in the anterior capsule which can increase the risk of posterior displacement of the weakly supported microspherophakia lens.
The rationale behind the ideal site of entry being equator or just posterior to it as compared to routinely done openings in the anterior capsule is that the capsule is relatively thicker and hence stronger in this area and has more resistance to tear, thus minimizing the risk of extension anteriorly or posteriorly. Another advantage of equatorial openings is the good visibility of both instruments through the undisturbed anterior capsule as well as easier surgical maneuverings owing to the good distance between them. Pilocarpine causes forward shift of the iris diaphragm which leads to further crowding of the anterior chamber and displacement of the lens posteriorly to the pupillary plane making the surgery more challenging because of the small size of the pupil. In cases of anteriorly dislocated lens we did not use intracameral pilocarpine but created peripheral iridectomy at the very beginning of the surgery. In our technique the bimanual IA probes are used to lift and support the freely mobile capsular bag lens complex and helps to maintain it in the central visual axis. The most crucial point is the initial aspiration of the core lens followed by removal of cortical fibers from the periphery while keeping the cortical plates around the capsular openings intact till the end of the procedure, decreasing chances of capsular openings extension. Our technique of kissing MVR was performed in eight eyes of four patients with microspherophakia. Using our technique, endocapsular lens aspiration was successfully performed in all patients without any intraoperative difficulties and complications. Postoperatively, at three months follow-up, the IOP was well controlled with best corrected visual acuity of 0.12 plus minus 0.11. We believe kissing MVR technique is a safe and effective approach and allows controlled endocapsular lens aspiration in cases of microspherophakia even with a severely mobile lens. Thus, our technique is simple, precise and reproducible and has the potential to optimize the surgical and visual outcomes.